All right. If we we also want to print out just how many years this is as a decimal. So like this is one point something years, right? So we're going to have another variable of type double called years as decimal. And we, we're going to have to do some calculations to figure this out, but we can start off by assigning it to total seconds. There is something interesting happening here because years is a decimal we just declared to be a double, but total seconds is an int. But if I compile this code, it works. Okay. So this came up the other day in class where someone asked, can we change the type of a variable? And the answer to that is no. Java is strongly typed. Once we declare a variable to be an int, it will always be an int. Um, a turtle is always a turtle. A string is always a string. Um, but the other question was, well, can we change the type of a value? And Java, in some cases, either automatically or with our explicit instructions, we can change the types of values. Um, and that's what's going on here. Um, this is called a conversion. So let's capture that. So a conversion is when a data value is, well, converted from one type to another. So for example, um, what do I mean by that? Well, we might convert an int to a double. We might go the other way. We might convert a double to an int. We might convert an int to a log. Okay, those are different types of conversions we can, we can do. In Java, there are, we categorize all conversions into two categories. Some conversions are called widening. And what do we mean by a widening conversion is that it will preserves, it preserves information. Okay. We're not going to lose anything when we do a widening conversion. So for example, if we convert an int to a double, if we take 3 and we make it a double, 3.0, it's the same value. We didn't lose any information. If we convert an int to a long, it's still the same number. We just now have the capacity to like have even bigger numbers. right? Um, that's what we mean by a widening conversion. The other type of conversion is called a narrowing conversion. It is what we refer to as lossy, meaning it may, we may lose information. For example, if we convert a double to an int, we may lose information. This categorization is based on the types, not specific values. Sure, if we convert the double 4.0 to an int, it's 4. It's the same exact number, but that's not how we categorize this. Java doesn't care about the specific values. Java cares about what could happen based on the types. So a double to an int is always a narrowing conversion because it has the potential to lose information. If we have 3.9 and we force it to be an int, it's going to become 3. We've lost that 0.9. Okay? Um, so one last note, Java only automatically performs widening conversions. Okay? Just like this. This is a widening conversion. Think of Java as fairly conservative with our data. It's not going to automatically do anything that would cause us to lose information. All right, we will pick this up when I'm back on Friday. Tomorrow I have various practice programming activities where you can apply these things. So do a quick commit and push. Check the announcements tomorrow in Canvas for like the specific activities to work on. All right, so years is a decimal. Right now we've just assigned the total number of seconds. We need to actually d divide this by how many seconds are in a year. But before we can do that, we need to actually calculate how many seconds are in the year. So we'll create another constant, final, um, long. And we'll call it seconds for every year. 
Now, I encourage you to scroll up to the top and copy and paste the name of these constants because they're kind of long. I'm not going to do that because I think it's distracting as you're looking to see the stuff scroll back and forth. Um, but we need to multiply all these constants by each other to end up with how many seconds are, are in every year. So if, for example, if we take the seconds for every minute and we multiply it by the minutes for every hour and we multiply that by the hours for every day and we multiply that by the days for every year, that product will be the number, the seconds for every year. And if you think about this from like a factor label or dimensional analysis or whatever term uh, they use in your science class, a um, bunch of units cancel and what we'll be left with is seconds for every year. I want to dive into a, a little bit more this particular statement because one thing that's different between how we look at code and how the Java runtime looks at code is we tend to look at a statement holistically. Um, that is like, oh, we multiply these four numbers together and we assign it to this variable seconds for every year. The Java runtime does not look at it holistically. The Java runtime does one small step at a time and it does that small step without being aware of or thinking about what future steps are going to come. And the, sm the order of the small steps is based on our order of operations, is based on that precedence and associativity we talked about on, on Wednesday. So when Java starts, it simply multiplies the int value seconds for every minute times the int value minutes for every hour, and that resulting value is the result of that operation. And then it takes that value and it multiplies it by hours for every day. And then it takes that integer value and it multiplies it by days for every year. And only then does it take the resulting product and assign it to this variable seconds for every year. And so as a result, often what we intend and expect is different than what Java actually does. And that could be an issue here. So that's what I want to kind of dive into a little bit more with a comment. So slash star enter. And what we're going to focus on here is what's called arithmetic oh, arithmetic promotion because up until you know the end of class on Wednesday every time we've been doing operations the types have matched right we've been really careful to make sure our types have always lined up in terms of assignment operator or any other operators but what if they don't line up so that's what we want to explore first. So if the two operands are of different types, Java attempts to promote one of the operands by doing a wide widening conversion and then performs the operation. So for example, if we're multiplying an integer value by a double value, Java will promote the integer to a double and then perform the multiplication. Um, that, that makes sense. That's safe. That's what we would expect. Um, but we need to keep in mind that this is done one small step at a time. So let's look at this example here. So in this case, both seconds for every minute and minutes for every hour. So we're focused just on this first operation here, multiplying seconds for every minute by minutes for every hour. So in this case, both of those variables are ints. So Java doesn't perform any promotion. And instead, it simply performs the multiplication and stores the result as an int. And here's why maybe that's not what we want. And maybe this is going to lead to a, to a bug 
because only after all three multiplications does Java promote the um, int value of the resulting product to a long and then assigns it to seconds for every year. And you may look at that and be like, okay, that sounds just fine. What's, what's the issue? Well, the issue is that maybe the reason why I chose to define seconds for every year as a long is I was worried that the resulting product would overflow an int. There'd be so many seconds in a year that it wouldn't fit in an int. Okay? As it turns out, that's not the case. The number of seconds in a year is not greater than two point something billion. Um, but if, if that was the case, then we, this converge, this promotion could have occurred too late. So I see this bug a lot, um, so I want to make sure we kind of make a note about it here. This promotion may be too late. If the multiplication overflows an int, the wrong value will be promoted to a long and stored. So if my intention by making seconds for every year long was to guard against an overflow error, this isn't the way to do it. Um, because all the multiplication actually is done with integer values. Only after we have the final product does it get promoted to a long and stored. And at that point, the overflow already occurred. It's too late. If that is what I want, I would need to make sure that the multiplication occurs with longs instead. So I would need to change one of these values. Um, I, you know, For example, change seconds for every month to be a long instead of an int. Um, and we'll see a moment how we can how we can force that to happen. And then the resulting behavior would be what, what we would hope for. So just watch out for this. Um, if you are relying upon promotion in your code, make sure it's going to, make sure it doesn't occur too late. Um, that's a real common bug I see. All right, so now in this case, it turns out we are okay. Seconds for every year is fine. So now that we have seconds for every year and we have this variable years as a decimal, we can actually, um, and years as a decimal is assigned total seconds. If we divide that by seconds for every year, we will have years as a, as a decimal. So let's do that. Years as decimal equals the current value of years as decimal, which currently is just the number of seconds, divided by seconds for every year. And we'll make a little comment about this too. So this too is an example of promotion. Okay? Um, but I want to make a note about that because there's a subtlety here which, which we sometimes get confused by. So in this example, the value of seconds for every year is promoted to a double and then floating point division is performed and assigned to years as decimal. And this is just what we would hope because years as a decimal is a double, seconds for every year is an integer type along. Um, we don't want this to be integer division. We want the decimal portion. But that's what we're going to get because years as a decimal is a double, seconds for every year that value will be promoted to a double and then the division occurs and the division will therefore be floating point division because we have doubles involved and we'll assign the resulting double to years as a, a decimal. The, point, the thing I want to be clear about though, which we sometimes get confused at, is that the local variable seconds for every year its type doesn't change. It is still a long, and it still has the same value. So when we talk about promoting a value to a different type, we're not changing the variable's type. We're not changing the value stored in that variable. Think of it instead as like the Java runtime creates a temporary variable of the promoted type and uses that instead. 
Um, we're not actually changing our local variables. So just, just keep that in mind as, as we go. Because uh, we initialized it to the total number of seconds, um, but it's as a double type. So for that, that's a good question. If instead I wrote this as years as decimal equals total seconds divided by seconds for every year, total seconds is a uh, long, and seconds for every year is a long, and so it actually it would do integer division, um, and so we'd lose that like fractional part that we want to capture. So. There are other ways to accomplish that, which we'll see in a moment, but this was like, this is one way to make sure that we actually end up with floating point division. Excellent question. So let's print this out, because this will be useful information to share with the user. Maybe they want to, we already printed how many um, whole numbers of years, days, hours, minutes, and seconds the specified time is. We can also just specify it as a single year with a decimal point. That might work well. <coughs> but we also, I want to print it out one more way for whoever is running our program. I want to give them a real rough estimate. Maybe this is a huge number of seconds, and I just want to tell them, hey, it's about this many decades, like order of magnitude. Um, so let's calculate how many decades it is, but then round it to the nearest decade. So we can be like, it's about one decade, or it's about five decades, or it's about 20 decades, whatever it happens to be. Um, so we're gonna I'm going to type a statement here, uh, and it's gonna, we're going to do three things in one line of code, and then we're going to break that apart piece by piece. So we're going to create a local variable of type int called decades. And we're going to do three operations at once. And don't worry, we're going to like explain what each of these three parts are. What we're doing here is we're taking years as a decimal and dividing it by 10, so that converts it to decades, but it's still going to be like a double. It's still going to be fractional. I said we wanted to round it to the nearest decade, and if we just were to cast or for, to do force a narrowing conversion, um, it just throws out the decimal portion, um, and that's not what we want. We want it rounded. So if we want to round, we always have to do it explicitly. Um, and so that's what the round piece is, and then we can force it to be an integer. So this is our first example. I guess when we highlighted code in the coin class, we saw this little parenthesis with a type inside it before, but this is our first example we're actually like being aware of, of a narrowing conversion. So to force a narrowing conversion, use the cast operator. Um, here's my definition of what the cast operator is. I think this is helpful. Um, a cast is the I know what I'm doing, trust me, conversion. Okay. So remember, Java is very conservative. It wants to protect our data. So the Java, Java would never automatically convert a double to an int or a long to an int because there's the potential we lose information. So a cast is how we force that narrowing conversion. We're telling Java, look, I know I might lose information. That's what I want. Trust me, just go ahead and force this thing to be an int. Um, so here's an example. If I use the cast operator, and the cast operator is literally the pair of parentheses with a type inside of it. Um, it only has one operand. It's the thing to the right. So if I were to cast, 84.69, what that does is it truncates it to an int with a value of 84. It throws out the decimal portion. It does not round. The cast operator has a very high precedence, and so 
I'll be honest, I forget exactly where it falls. So I just always put the expression I want to be casted in parentheses after it. Um, that way I never worry about like, oh, is it going to cast too early and then the operation's performed? I just always put parentheses and then I never have to worry about the um, order of operations with the cast operator. But it is very high. Um, I believe it's higher than multiplication and division, but I'd have to check. All right, so that's, that's the cast thing. Um, so like I said, casting does not round. If we want to round, we can. If we want to round a double to the nearest integer value, we use the math.round method. So here's what that um, looks like if we were to look at the Java docs for the math class which you all did yesterday when you were um, doing the annuity practice programming activity. You saw there are a lot of static methods. This is just another one. It returns a long. It's called round. And it takes one parameter of type double. So it rounds the double to the nearest integer value, returns it as a long, not an int, because it might not fit in an int um, as it goes. Now in our case, we know it will fit into an int. We're not going to have that many decades to crack this encryption. Um, so that's why we're going to then cast it to, to an int. So here's a pseudocode description of this one line of code. The following divides, divides years as decimal by 10, then rounds the resulting double value to the nearest decade and then casts the resulting long to an int. There's our pseudocode description. And so this is going to be the final thing we print. System.out.println or about so many decades. So try this out. Type this, compile this, type in, oh, I don't know, type in 500 million seconds when you run this method through BlueJay and see how many resulting years and days and everything else it is.